No red was on the same. Hmm. Okay, so the washers fit on here. Try to clear everything. So I got two gaskets and one washer on there. It goes in there like that. Remember that that goes in there too. Now you have to go around this part. That washer don't fit in there, so. We need a different spacer on the inside. Where's your valve at? Yeah, one of those. Oh, you got one on there. One of those. One of those. And a pair of these. Stuff. Almost like a wedge. Can't take it apart, but it'll fall apart. So right now we're short. Three hundred thousand would be zero. And how much tension you want in that spring? So we got to figure out our installed height right now. Right now our installed height is a uh, less than clearance. So we need about a half inch space from there, I think at least. We don't know yet until we get there. Okay, so what's your install height going to be? You think? What's your coil bind? Got a dimension yet? Mm -mm. What's your cam left? 400,000. 400,000. I thought it was more like 410. Uh, so we got to measure our coil bind. Oh, we should do two. See how consistent these springs are. We'll measure two of these. All right. You want to measure that, Bill? No, I don't. Your corner's forced. You just ruined the camera. So you can make a measure both of those. See, that's all the way. That's coil bind. Hard coil bind. Not that fake coil bind I tell you about. Okay, we're at 840. So if we call it 50, that'd be 900. Plus our lift. What would our lift? 410. So what's 900 plus 410? 9, 4, 10. <laughs> 9, 4, 13, 10. 10. Is like a 914 Porsche? <laughs> 13, 10. 13, 10. Sounds like a year. Alright, this one's about 850. So I think our 900's a good number. Right. 1.310 install height is what we need. Minimum. That's how we pack them all the way in. The RPM is going to drive. How much valve spring tension have these put out? These are all unknowns. We could probably look it up, but it's still unknown. Oh, I can only push 140 pounds. I didn't know I weighed that much. <laughs> Jeez.
Hard to believe I could push that hard. Well, I'm already over 140. Right there is working pressure. We have that much. Is that enough coil blind? So that's a 215. We back it up to 200. It's wide open. One inch. Looks like it's more than one inch to me. One inch. So we're 200 pounds at one inch installed. So that means if we go to one 400, it'd be uh, 200 wide open. If we go another. Down. Get down to nine and nine hundred install height. That's just about nine hundred. Or two ten. So what's that tell us there, Bill? Mm. Uh, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That was about 220 open the coil bar. So I mean if you pack it all the way in, we'll be down there, we'll be about 210 pounds wide open. If you unpack it. Real far out, you'll be 200 open. Open means over the top of the nose. When the lifter's all the way up, way up there, fully collapsed, 200 pounds. Uh, 200's enough, right? How heavy is that valve? How heavy is that compared to a stock valve? I have no idea. It's heavy enough. It's heavy enough. Yeah, I run 225 on my race bike, two and a quarter to 230. Depends what come in out. I run them up to 8,000 RPM. I don't think you run yours that high, do you? No. Maybe not to quite that much? Not quite. My can's a little more aggressive than yours, too, so just a wee bit. So, any over 180 is plenty over the top on this motor. So 200 is fine. Okay, so we want something around 1,300 to 1,400 install height. So if you average it out, it'd be like 1,350. Easy number to remember. Then we have how much right now? Do you even know? Mm -mm. Me either. What's your gaskets? How thick is this cover? A little bit more than another gasket. So we just figure another gasket in there. How's that? I got three gaskets on one guide. That's not too many gaskets, is it? So we're going to need some more gaskets. You get any more of these gaskets? Oh, geez, they're not in this drawer. These are different, but they're close. These are valve guide gaskets. They look similar, so. Mm -hmm. So we can either order more 
45 gaskets, or we can just use big twin gaskets down here on the washer here, right there. Put a washer in there like that. Look at that big void in there that you can't really see. Or I can go home and wife get some more gaskets for you. <laughs> I think there might be white though. Maybe I'll do that. Alright, so for now we're gonna use a we're just gonna put another gasket on here. A couple more gaskets. That kind of mask, whatever the hell that is. At least close enough for what we're gonna do. Any another wash spacer. There it is. Okay, what's that stall height he wanted? 135. 2150. How's that? So we're going to have a little extra. 600. 1. Point, oh, excuse me. 2.150 minus 1.350. 800. Eight hundred thousand spacer. Got one else floating around? Mm -hmm. That goes inside of here. That's if we pack it all the way in. If we unpack a little bit, three quarter inch spacer. So we need a nine sixteenths washer. The bad part is we're right off the end of our shoulder here. To our valve seal. We have almost no, no ledge to hit on. See how little that is? Yeah. So we're going to have to register off this, this 428 diameter, which is evil bad guy diameter. Yeah, 420. So I'll register the spacer off of this, and then I just make sure I get a nice chamfer so it'll clear up inside here. Because you want to bottom out on the top of the guide and not have it tight against all these washers. So we'll have to, rest we'll have to put a little counterbore in there like that, inside of it. Or you have a big taper like that, that'll work too. Two of those down there like that. Okay, so we need about three quarters of an inch to eight hundred thousandths. So we're gonna make that out of something. Piece of pipe? I don't know. I think we're gonna like having to make that one from scratch. I'm well, probably not gonna be able to find a washer laying around this thick. <laughs> three quarter inch thick washer, huh? We might have a spacer that thick, but most spacers aren't that thick either. Most spacers are pretty thin. So I don't think there's anything around here I'm going to be able to use that out of. I'm going to have to probably make it from scratch. I'm going to make it from scratch means I can make it out of a big diameter. It's just one inch diameter. About 980 probably. Nope, that's one inch. Got to make sure one inch goes inside of here. Not quite. Oh, it is. Got room to spare. 1054, yeah, so one inch is fine. So a piece of one inch diameter aluminum. Do a little machining. 428 hole, plus 10, 15 thou extra. So it'll be a 7 16 hole, be 430, 435, whatever. So that'll work. We just counterbore at the very top to clear the 916s up here. So we just put the reamer, 916 reamer right through, or that other reamer we just used. One size over 916s for clearance. 
we'll bring that in about 50 thou just to make sure we're, we're below this lip. So I'll probably go 100 thou just to make sure. It'll register off the OD of the guide here. Just when it drops down, it's good. You don't want to wiggle around. You want your valve springs to be stable now. Move it over the place. So. Well, that's going to be a problem on this. Damn, I didn't think about that. Well, that's going to suck. See, these are made to be on the 916s. These are not going to be on 916s anymore. They're going to be up here. They're not going to register very good. So I'm going to have to make a tapered, not a tapered, you know, a stepped spacer so it'll indicate into my spring. Now it's getting more complicated. <laughs> do we need to draw that out yet or just do it in my head? <laughs> Got all the dimensions figured out. So we need to have a little step in there. How big is our step? thickness here 200 so that means we need a one inch by one inch cylinder with a stepped ID bore shouldn't be too hard to come up with that all right let's go make some parts be back okay we need some one inch aluminum that's all we got left so he's gonna go pick me up some more so it's allows you to make out one inch than anything else because that's the diameter we need. Okay, it fits. See, my math is correct. <laughs> and, uh, that's pretty good. We can make a tool if we have enough of it. Okay, so we need to make up our spacer. Remember what our spacer is going to look like? It's going to have a shoulder in it. It's going to have a shoulder in the inner diameter and the outer diameter. Looks like that. One inch. One inch diameter. The length is one inch. I went to blueprint class when I was younger. Can you tell? And this here needs to be. What was our rumor? 980? I mean, uh, um, it was bigger than. 0.588 times. 0.100 deep. That's that one. That'll clear our valve guide. And this hole through here, 0.428 plus. I'll have to see what the next reamer is. You have to look on the chart over there and see what the reamer is. You can go do that if you want. Am I blocking you? Oh, please, excuse me. Sorry there. Let me interfere the video in here. Okay, then this here. Needs to be 9 16 uh, diameter. Times 0.200 tall. Hmm. Well, the camera died. Camera died for some reason. Okay, there's what we gotta make up. That's advanced blueprint drawing there, buddy. So we got one inch diameter, one inch long, a 200 thou top here, 916 diameter, and we're gonna have a recess of 588, which is our 916 guide, and 100 deep. Gives our clearance on the other back side. And it's 1.2 overall length. So we need four of those. I need them now. So I can go buy some aluminum. I'll make some more. Because I can get three maybe out of that. I'll be out. So we're just getting a new piece. All right, so I give us something to do for next week, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and finish that all up over there. Do a mock-up uh, assembly. See how it looks. So getting close. Way back next week. <laughs>